Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise, I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I wanna to talk with you about a common complaint that I see from new wig wearers, and that is about wiggy wigs. Wigs that look wiggy. Some people struggle with the wig journey because every single wig they put on their head looks wiggy to them. Some of it is all up in here, and we need to address that, but there are many, many simple tips that you can employ to help you deal with this. So if you're struggling with wigs looking wiggy, watch this video. I've got some ideas for you. So before I get started on the topic of the day, I will tell you that I have on my head Ellen Villa Flare Mono in the color Caramel Rooted. I have a review of Flare Mono in two colors actually on my YouTube channel. So if you want to know more about this super cute style, then you can go check out my full review. Okay, so why this topic, wiggy wigs, what's all of this about? Well, I see complaints every single day, many times a day, that wigs look too wiggy on people. On Facebook, in my email inbox, on comments on my videos and other people's videos, it's a real challenge in the beginning when you first start wearing wigs and until you've gotten used to having a full head of hair, trained your brain a little bit and um, started to, to look at yourself a little bit differently, wigs can look very wiggy in the beginning. And this happens to almost everyone. You are not alone. When I first started wearing wigs, I truly did not think I was going to be able to successfully wear wigs. It took me a few months to finally find a wig that I didn't feel looked completely wiggy and fake. I had many nights when I would cry myself to sleep practically over this. I watched hundreds of hours of videos. I couldn't understand how all of the reviewers I was watching looked so fabulous in the wigs that they had on, but every single wig I purchased looked terrible on me. I was having dreams about wigs. I mean, I was completely obsessed in the beginning and very, very discouraged and frustrated. Please know that you're not alone. This is something many of us go through and I have six tips for you that will hopefully help you move forward on your wig wearing journey and not be stuck where you are today. So tip number one, I got my sheet because <laughs> I'm low tech over here. <laughs> um, find a wig that looks as much like your bio hair as possible in style and color. I really think that there is a lot going on when you first start wearing wigs and you will shock your system, you'll shock your brain if you both go for a wig that suddenly gives you a full head of hair, especially if you're not used to having a full head of hair. If you've been losing your hair for a while, this is especially important. Um, and then if you go with a completely different color or style, it is just going to be too much for you to process. So try to get as close to your bio hair style as possible and color. That will really help a lot. There's plenty of time for you to go for the dream hair and experiment later. Uh, along that same line, I also think you should probably stay away from basic cap wigs in the beginning if you find yourself struggling a lot with wigs looking wiggy. If you're not familiar with what I mean by basic cap, I have a new wig wearer series that is eight episodes long. Episode one talks all about the different types of wig caps and wig fibers. I will link that as well as any other video I have out there that reinforces these six tips in the description below. So use those as your, you know, next. So if one of these seems like something that could help you, go find that video that I demonstrate what I'm talking about in this video down in the description. And then this could be just a whole educational series for you. So <clears throat> hair looks like your bio hair and I would stay away from basic cap wigs. Not because they're not realistic, and some people are very successful wearing basic cap wigs, even in the very beginning. But one of the challenges with basic cap wigs is that they tend to have a higher density and permatease. 
both of which are going to be difficult if you've been losing your hair for a while. It's going to make you feel like you've got a wig on your head. So the lower density, little to no permatease styles are going to be better in the beginning because you're not used to seeing yourself with a lot of hair and you just don't find those styles in basic cap wigs as often. Usually basic cap wigs have a lot of permatease because they have to somehow hide how the hair fiber is sewn into the cap. When you put a wig on like this one that has a monofilament that makes a part line and a lace front, they hand tie those individual fibers into the cap and so you don't need permatease to disguise that. You actually want to see it. So that is like my number one tip. Try to find a wig that looks like your bio hair and don't go with a basic cap wig if you can help it and then look for low permatease, low density. Um, if you're used to bob styles, there are a lot of great low density, very flat, uh, no permatease styles out there. Ellen Villa has a number of them in a bob style. Um, Renee of Paris Kai was actually the first wig that I felt comfortable wearing because of that. Now I know more about wigs and I don't think that one is as realistic, but I think there's a lot of styles out there that you can find. Number two style your wig. I think this is a hugely overlooked thing with new wig wearers. We feel like we get the wig out of the box and we just, we can do nothing to it. We just have to wear it exactly as it comes. Styling your wig is probably one of the easiest solutions to helping you feel comfortable in a wig. And when I say styling, I mean something like this. Just take these little claw clips and all I did was take a clump of hair here, twist it a little bit, clipped it. Clump of hair here, twisted it a little bit, clipped it. That's all I did. But it makes all, and then I just tucked a little bit behind my ears. It makes all the difference to style your wigs. Use claw clips. Use bobby pins. Use um, ponytail holders and maybe put a little bit back in a half up, half down. There's so many things. Use headbands. There's so many great headbands out there that are easy to use and will help you tremendously to keep your wig from looking wiggy to your eye, to help maybe even tame poof. I have a number of styling videos out there where I show you how to use clips. I also show you how to use headbands. I'll try to find one or two that I think are really good and I'll link those in the description for you, but style your wig. Before you cut into the wig, before you do any of my other tips, Try styling. I think that will help a ton. And there are some wigs, even I, who I'm super comfortable with wigs, even I have wigs that I can only wear styled, that I don't think look natural or realistic, just down as it comes and I have to style them. Style your wigs, ladies. It's like the easiest, cheapest solution. And it may take practice. You may not get it right the first time, but keep trying. Styling your wigs is great. And let me just tell you, if poofiness is the problem, if you're looking at the wig and it just looks too poofy, which is making it look wiggy to you, either throw a headband on, just even putting a headband just right here will help tame the poof. Or um, I have a video where I show you how to use bobby pins to, you lift up the top layer, you bobby pin the bottom uh, amount down to the cap, then you look, put the top layer over that so you can't see the bobby pin completely reduces poof. I'll put that video in the description. It's actually amazing. And I've heard from so many people that that one tip made all the difference for them in their wig wearing journey. So number two, style your wig. Number three, pluck the part or the hairline. So now we're starting to get into something a little bit more advanced where you're actually making a change to the wig. But it, again, can be like all the difference for you if you try this. So I'll put my video in the description where I show you how to pluck the part line. So basically, if it's a, you can't do this to a basic cap, but to one that has a mono top, a mono part, any mono filament, you can take and take a tweezers and just pluck along the part line and that will open up that part line and make it a little bit more visible. And then you can take a little bit of makeup, foundation, concealer, or just even face powder and dab it onto the part line to hide the knots a little bit. It is a game changer. 
So again, I'll put that video in the description. You can also do the same thing to the lace front. If you feel that the lace front isn't very natural and you want it to look a little bit more like a realistic hairline, which is not even and densely knotted, then pluck the hairline. Hairline right here is what I'm talking about. That can make all the difference. Um, so that video will be below. Another tip would be if you find that wigs look wiggy because they look too shiny, you can tamp down the shine using dry shampoo um, or cornstarch or any kind of powder that won't damage the fibers. Hairspray, styling cream, just wearing your wig, soaking it in cool water. All of those things will help to tamp down shine. The more you wear the wig, the less shiny it will be. Not all wigs look shiny. This one never looked shiny. I didn't have to do anything to it. But sometimes blondes can look quite shiny or super dark brunettes. Cheaper wigs tend to look shinier because they're using cheaper materials. So, you know, you may get a wig and shine isn't an option. I've never had to use dry shampoo on a wig. I'm just not super sensitive to shine. But some are. And so that is one way to make it look less wiggy. Uh, the fifth of six, we're on number five now, is add low lights or rooting to your wig or cover up a dark root if that's what's making it look wiggy. I have multiple videos where I show you how to root a wig with Copic markers, with furniture markers. You can use permanent markers. I've heard from people who've done that. You can use eyeshadow. If you don't want to do something that's permanent, you can use eyeshadow. Um, root cover-up spray can be used. I, I caution you on that one though, and I will be doing a video on this very soon. It does tend to coat the fibers quite a bit and it does make them feel tacky and sticky and heavy. So I probably would try something other than root cover-up spray to start and see if that will work for you. But eyeshadow has been known to work. And so you can either add just gentle rooting. It doesn't have to be super dark, just enough to give the wig some dimension if it doesn't have it. You can also add low lights if the color is just all wrong for you. Use furniture markers, Copic markers to use, add low lights. And I will uh, link the video I did on this in the description below. It was a game changer for me on I Love Girl Mono by Ellen Villa, one of my fa all time favorite wigs. And I got the one in hot hazelnut mix. It's not rooted. And I couldn't wear it in the beginning because it was just too light. And I'm a brunette, a dark brunette, and I needed rooting. I rooted it perfect. I mean, it truly was like night and day how I felt about that wig. So this don't underestimate a little bit of dimension to help you. Likewise, if it's too dark of roots, I just recently reviewed a product by Style Edit that is a blonde root powder and I demonstrated it and it definitely works. It may not 100% remove the root depending on what you're dealing with, but it will lighten it and it's not permanent. So there's things you can do whether the rooting isn't there and you need it or is too dark and you want to lighten it. Finally, my last tip, wear your wig as much as you can around the house. A huge hurdle that a lot of us go through is all up in our brain. We have to train our brain because we're not used to seeing ourselves with a full head of hair. You will be really amazed at how you'll start to see things differently as you get used to seeing yourself in a wig. I struggled so much with this. I had been losing my hair for 20 years. My hair was so fine and thin at, when I finally found wigs. I mean, it was so bad. I, I, Topic powder really wasn't covering it anymore. So every wig I put on my head looked wiggy to me, no matter what I did. I rarely feel that way now because I'm so used to it. I see myself with wigs on all the time. And so a lot of this is just desensitizing yourself to wigs. And so wear wigs around the house as much as you can. Look at yourself in the mirror, catch your reflection in a window or something, but just start to get yourself used to not only seeing yourself with a wig on your head, but feeling it because it can be a little uncomfortable at first. You're not used to having something on your head all the time. And it was uncomfortable at first for me and I couldn't wait to whip my wig off my head at the end of the day. Now, some wigs, I barely feel them. I can wear them for 15 hours and it's no issue. Uh, so you will get there, but it does take time. So I would say 
wear your wigs and you'll be surprised at how much that will help. So at the end of the day, there were six tips. I'm sure there's lots more out there that can help you feel more comfortable with the wig wearing journey, but you've got to start. You have to start trying. So if you've got wigs in a box and you're not wearing them, I want you to commit to going and grabbing one of those wigs out right now if you can or this weekend, but set a goal for yourself that you are going to take one of your wigs and you are going to practice with it. You're going to practice styling it. You're going to do whatever you can to start to get used to that wig. I promise you, if you make this a priority, you will get there, but you can't let this beat you. Wigs are amazing. They're such a great solution. I am so thankful for wigs. It has made a huge difference in my life, but it didn't come without a few tears and a struggle. It really didn't. And I rarely does it. And so you've just got to pull up your big girl panties and say, okay, I can do this. Denise could do this. If Denise did it, I can do it. Seriously. Um, all of the reviewers you see out here started somewhere. Very rarely did we just jump in, especially those of us who are doing it because we were losing our hair. Yes, there are some people out there with a full head of hair wearing wigs and they love it. Maybe they didn't struggle as much because they're used to seeing themselves with a lot of hair. But for those of us who've lost our hair, it's a huge shock on our system. And, you know, our self-esteem has been somewhat damaged by struggling with hair loss. So be gentle with yourself, but don't let yourself off the hook completely because you do have to get there. So try some of these tips, watch other videos, but do something. Just do something. If you need someone to talk to, if you want to vent, you can send me an email at heywigsister at gmail.com. You can message me on Instagram or Facebook. I get a lot of messages and emails, so please be aware that I may take a while to get back to you, but I try to get back to everyone. Join a Facebook group if you're not part of a Facebook group that is focused on hair loss and wigs. They are such a great support, even if you are anti-social media. Maybe you create an account just for a little while till you can get over this hurdle. You'll be surprised at how much it helps to talk to other women who completely understand what, what you're going through. And then get rid of the account once you feel more comfortable. But just do something, okay? Promise me, you will do something. One or two steps to help you get closer to being comfortable with wigs. Maybe you can tell me what you're going to try in the description. Uh, or in the comments, just, you know, what's your struggle right now? And which one of these tips do you think is doable for you? What is, what resonated with you on this video and what would help you get closer to your goal of being comfortable in wigs? Let's have a conversation about it and let's all help each other. I know some of my wig sisters are going to leave great comments down there that are going to help you. So read through some of the comments. We've got some wonderful women out there in this community and they want to help just as much as I do. So thanks for watching you guys. I hope this helped you and I hope this gave you an idea, but at the end of the day, just try. Okay, please just try. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.